Hey, this is uh, Tattoo Tony, and this is the second part to After the Curtain Close, where we'll be exploring a movie theater that was opened, I believe, in 1928. And um, these clips here are from across the street. Um, I just wanted to show a little bit of what this downtown area looks like, um, the condition that things are in. Um, here's the front of the movie theater. Um, it's unbelievably beautiful. Uh, this, you know, there's going to be a couple minutes of this because there's so many details that I'm going to zoom in on things and uh, show you more detail. There will also be a third part to this video. Um, I really like to take people through exactly what I saw when I was in a building. Um, it is possible that I could get condense things to just the most interesting um, shots, but um, I really try to do this so that you're getting a walkthrough um, and seeing it the way that I saw it. I believe like the white um, eyeball shaped thing in the middle of that facade, I believe those were lights. Um, they looked to me like they would have lit up and by looking at some older movie theaters um, that I've seen pictures of, I would believe that those would have lit up and I see other things that look like they may have held lights as well. The, the gold um, ornaments on the outside that are facing upwards there that kind of look like a dish. I wouldn't be surprised if those also had lights in them. There seems to be one business remaining in this building. Um, some of those front business areas where the box office was, I'll get into those in the uh, third part of the video. And like I said, there was just so much detail on this facade that I wanted to uh, take a little time to show as much as I could so that you guys could really get a good look at it. You'll see what I believe to be a sun wheel on this building. Which would be a backward swastika. Some of these tiles have ships. Sun wheel would be the original symbol that uh, you know Nazis would have twisted into the swastika. And here we are in the building. Um, this is where the last video left off. I was looking at the ceiling. And I'm about to um, go through this door into the front part of the building. That in front of us is, I believe, an ice maker. I'm glad the inside of this building isn't covered in graffiti. There is some, and it's been here for a while. But... Um, I'm glad there's not as much as I do find in some places. Now this theater closed in 1960 I believe. I'm not sure what some of this stuff uh, is doing up here. See this old refrigerator? I love the pink interior. I've actually got an old, uh, like, 1948 Westinghouse refrigerator in my house upstairs that runs quietly. They don't build things like that anymore, and it's round top. It's not pink, though, but that, fr that refrigerator was cool. That is the side of a staircase that goes up into the next level. We will go up and take a look at that here in a second and see what's on the second level. At some point I'll also go up to the third level and uh, we'll also go on the balcony. Uh, those will be in the uh, third version or third part of this video. There's a round, round uh, kind of cutout we saw from the other side. Now something interesting that we realized while we were here and we we're like <clears throat> you know really thinking we should make 
uh, less noise is that these cabinets there's a uh, thing for a, a soda fountain um, these cabinets that you're gonna see when we turn the corner are all welded to this door frame and the cabinets are welded shut um, I think this is right behind the business that still remains and the way that they secured the back door that leads into that business from this abandoned part was by welding all this stuff up um, real tight up against this it's that's the only thing I can figure because it's all the doors are welded shut I was curious what was in there but obviously there's a bunch of brazed welds another thing I want to throw out there is um I had one video that really took off see that that round up in the ceiling that's pretty cool if you guys caught the stuff in the ceiling but in any case uh, that I made some okay revenue off of and I kinda want to get your guys' opinion that um, you know the money will definitely go back into the channel and I'm kinda curious um, to get some of your opinions um, because it's a toss-up between getting more and or better camera equipment um, such as a stabilizer and another camera and having a couple cameras for shooting different things or just getting a better stabilizer for this camera you know like a really good one and uh, or spending the revenue on some road trips to uh, more locations to film and make videos and just make them as I've been making them just kinda curious what your guys thoughts are another thing too if um, any of you guys have any um, suggestions is I'm thinking about doing some sort of contest um, you know with the prize maybe being a real nice print from one of these buildings uh, you know that uh, that Andrew took with his nice camera this piece of newspaper here that I found in this storage room, um, you'll, you're about to see it better in a second, but I believe the date was July 1948, July 1st of 1948. So anyways, I'm thinking about doing some sort of contest. I haven't thought of the details yet. But if anybody has any ideas on what sort of contest, uh, you know, I might be able to, any any ideas. Maybe you've seen something on another channel. There's an old Good and Plenty box. I did pick it up and kind of turn it over and look at it to see if there was anything that would give away the date or how old that was. I mean, certainly it's possible it could be from 1960 when the theater closed. Um, I don't know how many design changes they had on their boxes I guess you could go look up vintage good and plenty's boxes and see what the uh, you know box design and lettering see if there were any changes to try to date it there was a piece from the ceiling that had fallen on the ground one of these guys that tagged inside this building I think it said Cresto or something and I recognize some other writing also tagged on the front facade of this building and to me as beautiful as the facade is I just don't understand why he chose to tag there you know maybe the side of the building on the plain brick but that's just you know I don't know what to say about that I do but I'm I'll hold some of it back there's a hole going through to the first floor this is uh one of the restrooms I guess for the people who are sitting in the balcony as I mentioned in the first video the grand opening this theater featured Al Jolson um, he's a goofy entertainer from the twenties you can go look him up uh, he did some kind of en entertainment acts that wouldn't go over too well today 
you know who he is, then you'll know what I'm talking about. Also, this uh, was uh, had had some of the first indoor modern air conditioning in this city. It also was the first theater in southern Illinois to have talking pictures. They had a Vitaphone sound system installed in, maybe that was installed in 1928 and the theater opened in 25. So this kind of corridor I'm walking around in, uh, the doorways to the left of me right now would go into the auditorium on the balcony, and to the right of me there's rooms, restrooms, other kinds of storage rooms, I'm not sure, and to the right of me there is a staircase that goes up to the third floor where there are different storage rooms and lockers. I imagine they may have had maybe musicals or plays or other productions that were here because there was a storage room that had uh, you know, lockers in it and uh, the projectionist room up on the third floor, some utilities for the buildings. Here's another restroom. The reason I go through these buildings and show all this stuff is, like I said, so that you guys can feel like you walked through it with me. Um, the other reason is, you know, for preservation reasons, I see photographs that either have the outside or a couple, you know, different angles of the inside of the theater, you know, the, the main room with the seating. and. Uh, you know, very good photographs from nice can uh, cameras that may, you know, capture some things that I didn't get in detail. Um, but there's a lot of details I pick up here that I do not see in anything else. And, you know, for that reason, there's a lot of things that are preserved in this that there may not be a visual record of anywhere else. also want to mention to um, anybody that enjoys my videos and you, you know by no means watch for free I'm you know I'm happy for views especially likes um, if you watch the video and, and you enjoy what I do hit the like button on there you know if you're one of the you know four or five hundred people that regularly watch every video um, please hit the like button I went into the room with the uh, lockers there and um, We'll continue from there in the next video. Um, I want to throw this out there too. We are on Patreon. And uh, any donation on there will go straight into making more videos and upgrading. Um, you know, just helping this, you know, continue. And uh, you can donate as little as a dollar a month there. Um, what it does is, I believe it, you know, in, until you stop it, it's easy to stop it. You know, cancel your, I guess you could call it a subscription. But, um, you know, if you donate a dollar a month, it will help us, um, and uh, it'll continue to just take a dollar a month from you. So anybody that does that, I greatly appreciate it. It'll help us keep this going. Um, contact information's in front of you. Um, private messages on Facebook, Tattoo Tony Alton with no spaces. Thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate your support.